Welcome to our channel and welcome to the live stream version of today's worship service. The live chat function is available and we encourage everyone to say hello to each other in the live chat, especially if you're visiting for the first time or you're new to the channel. Bulletins for you to follow along can be found on the uh, landing page of our website. It's located down near the bottom of the page. You see weekly services and you can click on the bulletin for the upcoming service. We will be going live shortly. Due to potential copyright concerns, we will often mute the audio during the organ prelude. So please do not attempt to adjust your volume at this time. And thank you for joining us for the online version of our worship today. And we hope to see you in person at a future service. Thank you and have a blessed day.
Good morning. morning. Any first-time visitors here today? Any first-time visitors? Welcome, welcome. Please join us after we have refreshments in the parish hall just across the courtyard. Um, If there are any choir who are here, I'd like to meet with you in the conference room around 1030. Okay, choir who are here today, I'd just like to talk to you a little bit about, uh, about April and, and May. Um, a big thank you, speaking of choir, <clears throat> big thank you to the choir, the altar guild, all the assistants around the altar, um, everybody, ushers, greeters, everyone who stepped up and did that little extra through Holy Week and Easter with all the different services and all the responsibilities. Thank you so much, thank you. Yeah, and also the AV team, they, they've had to step it up too with all those extra services, so thank you. Uh, the re-entry simulation, the prison re-entry simulation is next Saturday from 10 a.m. till noon, and I think there's still uh, some room, I know Rena's out there giving out the, the uh, bulletins, but uh, I think there's still some room for that. If you are interested in learning about that, we still have some room, right? And they could talk to you at the coffee time? Okay. If if you're interested, from 10 a.m. till noon next Saturday. And it goes through the whole process of what it's like when someone is released from prison and all the things they they encounter after that initial release. And it's not very easy. So it gives you some idea of of what that process is. Um, Next Saturday, 4 p.m., we have our our Saturday Eucharist. So come on out. It's praise and worship. service, very relaxed, and uh, we invite you. It's held in the parish hall, 4 p.m. Saturday. And on this coming Wednesday at 10 a.m., Chris Arendelle has that special presentation, which he'll be doing in the parish hall, um, r- related to his time in the pr- uh, prisoner, of, prisoner camp, of war camp, when uh, him and his family were held for three and a half years by the Japanese in the Philippines and he will be doing a special presentation on that this Wednesday, 10 a.m. in the Parish Hall. Uh, Time with the Treasurer. It's time for a quarterly update, and if anyone's interested and has questions of the Treasurer, uh, Glory Cadwallader will be meeting on Tuesday, April 16th at 10.30 a.m. Information on page 10 of your bulletin, and the boutique has an Easter sale, so hopefully you can grab your coffee and go and check out some of the wonderful gifts. So again, welcome to everyone who's here. We begin our, and continue our Easter celebration, hymn 193 in the hymn book or in your bulletin.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. And together, Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. The book of Acts keeps reminding us that there's a way of doing things to transformed people. It turns their way of life upside down, and that makes all kinds of things possible. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions. But everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands, or houses, sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each, as any had need. The word of the Lord. Please join me in reading the psalm, responding at the half verse. Oh, how good and pleasant it is. It is like the fine oil upon the head, upon the beard of Aaron. It is like the dew of Hermon, 
for there the Lord has ordained the blessing. All sins are not simply individual, but are one in that they all, no matter what they are, separate us from God and each other. Easter is God's refusal to leave the world in the lurch, the risen son's promise to reclaim us and everyone else for his father. A reading from the first letter of John. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it, and testify to it, and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. I speak to you this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. In the words of our hymn we just sang, Help then, O Lord, our unbelief, and may our faith abound, to call on you when you are near, and seek where you are found. Has anyone here ever struggled with your faith? I think, if we're honest, we all have. There have been times when, whether we were younger or, or in adult life, seeking something about who is God, who is Jesus, you know, and we are challenged at times trying to come to a faith that will bolster us and support us in times of need, in times of celebration, in times of joy. Yet we hear today that one of the very inner circle, one of the 12 disciples of Jesus, Thomas, it says, had some doubt. Well, it's always this time of year, Sunday after Easter, that we have the story with Thomas. And I think that's a good thing. So last week, we were packed, right? We are here to celebrate Easter. And for those who keep asking me, we had 255 people here last week, okay? We were, we were here to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus, especially if you had walked those days through the Holy Week and went through Good Friday and heard the story of the crucifixion to come on the Sunday and to celebrate that Jesus is risen was truly a joy. We leave Easter Sunday with the celebration. But then for Easter tide, the 50 days of Easter which we are now in, when we have the stories of Jesus who encounters, the risen Jesus, encounters his disciples and then 
other people. We now have an opportunity to step back a second and say, wow, that was wonderful last week, but now what does it mean? What does it mean to say Jesus Christ is risen? And what does that mean to me? What does it mean to the church? And what does it mean to the world? Thomas is a person who loved Jesus. He believed in Jesus. There was no doubt about that. But what the disciples all struggled with was understanding what Jesus meant when he said that he will be killed and rise on the third day. They did not understand that. And in our story today in the gospel, it continues right after Mary Magdalene comes back from the tomb saying she has seen the Lord. But if you remember that story, just prior to her encounter with Jesus, who she first didn't recognize, thought he was the gardener, you know, and then he called her name, said Mary, and then she recognized him. Prior to that, she had gone to, to the tomb, whether just to be out there, to pray, to weep, whatever, and she saw the stone open, she runs back, tells the disciples, Peter and John run to the tomb, and they see that, yes, his body's not there. The stones moved away. But they still didn't understand they didn't yet understand and believe that Jesus was raised, but they definitely believed his body wasn't there. And the fear that maybe the religious authorities stole his body, perhaps, or whatever happened, they hid behind closed doors in fear of the authorities, in fear that maybe them, as his inner circle, maybe they would be rounded up and arrested and who knows what would happen to them. Understanding that Jesus was still alive, had been raised from the dead, had not yet happened in their minds until this gospel reading that we have today, where from behind closed doors, Jesus appears. And that's Easter night. So this says in the evening. But Thomas wasn't there. But we'll talk a bit about about parts of this in a moment. We all struggle with faith. There isn't a person here, myself included, that hasn't struggled to understand who Jesus is. And my journey that led into the church took many, many years. It started when I was a little boy. Just before I was 21, I was baptized. But that was just the beginning of my journey of really going deeper into Jesus. Who is Jesus? What does it mean to say, I believe in Jesus as my Lord and Savior? So today we have a whole bunch of things happening. And you could hold it, in, hold it just quietly in your mind about faith. Because we do struggle. And doubt is not a bad thing. You know, Thomas gets that title, Doubting Thomas. But you know what? Think about it. He wants to believe. He wanted to believe. He was told by the other disciples that they saw Jesus. And he, go, you know, he didn't believe them. Well, unless I put my fingers in the holes in his hands and my hand in his side where he got Jesus was speared, I won't believe. Well, maybe part of the problem was... The other disciples didn't explain it properly. Maybe they didn't share their faith properly. I don't know. But it comes down to us today. How do we share our faith? How do we reach out to the doubters out in the community, the ones who maybe are looking for something? Maybe they are seeking something more in their lives, but we are the ones who fall short of sharing the faith of Jesus in a way that excites them. Part of my doctoral work was interviewing <clears throat> seniors, older adults, 
who had faith stories. And the thesis was all about connecting seniors with teenagers. Not to say sit down and read something, but to share faith stories that would make a difference in the lives of the young people. And it, if you go deeper into it, it's, it's all about generativity. It's about leaving a legacy for the future. And some want to leave a legacy of faith for their children, for their grandchildren, and so on. And I hear all the time people that say, oh, I raised my kids in the church, but they don't come to church. And their kids don't come to church. When's the last time you shared your faith? When's the last time faith was shared in a, in a way that was exciting and life-giving and enriching that people look at you and say, oh, I want to have what you got, right? And that is the issue with churches today. We keep it to ourselves, we hold it in, we keep it in the walls, and then when we do have a story to tell, we don't share it. We don't share the life-giving changes. We don't share the healings that happen. We don't share the lives that are changed when people have Christ come into their lives. We don't share it. And then we wonder why people don't believe. The disciples of Jesus encountered the risen Lord on that night, Easter night, first day of the week. But they were fearful, fearful for the religious authorities that may come after them, but maybe if the story that Mary Magdalene shared with them was true and that Jesus was truly alive, perhaps they were also scared about what would Jesus do to them. Because what did the disciples do? Can anyone tell me? What happened at the end of Holy Week or towards the end of Holy Week, the night after they had supper with Jesus, and Jesus was arrested, what happened? What, happened? what did the disciples do? They denied him. Peter, one of the closest to Jesus, denied him three times. The other disciples fled. The only ones at the crucifixion were the women and John. That was it. The guys fled. Maybe they were afraid on many levels. But Jesus came. He showed them his wounds. And the interesting thing is that the risen Christ still bears the wounds. He bears the wounds also to remind us that life has struggles. And to be a follower of Jesus also brings its dangers. But the wounds are there. And the wounds that they saw identified him as the crucified and risen Lord. And those caught their attention. But did he then criticize them? Did he then come down on them and say, where were you when I needed you the most? No, he said, Shalom Alechem, peace be with you. The peace that is beyond understanding, the peace that comes from only from God. And in that moment, there was a healing that happened. A healing from the terrible guilt that they were probably experiencing. Guilt for fleeing Jesus. Guilt for letting him down. Guilt for denying him. And in that moment of peace be with you, they were reconciled to Jesus. And they became again a community that gathered around him and loved him, and acknowledged and worshipped him. But 
but Thomas wasn't there. Now, it's thanks to my son Cameron, and I know he's not watching right now because he's on a train heading back to his home after being here for two weeks. He introduced me and Annette to the show The Chosen, and we've been binge-watching it. But we're only, in, we're only in season three. What's interesting about that show is how it develops the personalities of the disciples, the chosen. And Thomas as a specific person. I know Cameron said it, it will keep developing his character as we continue through the seasons. But Thomas loved Jesus and Thomas believed in Jesus. But he had a hard time understanding what did it all mean when they said they seen Jesus, that Jesus was alive. And of course, in his own grief, he, he throws out those words, you know, I, unless I see, I don't believe, right? And then Jesus appeared a week later after that, today. And Jesus, knowing what Thomas had already been thinking and said, called him over and said, put your fingers in here. Put your hand here. Don't doubt, but believe. And Thomas is the only one who declares, my Lord and my God. The only one in the gospel. Jesus has been declared Messiah before by Peter, in the confession of Peter, as we call it. But Thomas, the one who was the doubter, is the first one to declare Jesus as my Lord and my God. But where people come down on Thomas is that Jesus continues to say, well, do you have to see to believe? You know, blessed are those who don't see but believe. And that's part of the role of this Gospel of John. Because it ends that there are more written in this book. There's so much more that will help you believe that Jesus is the Messiah, and that you may believe and have life in his name. Part of the purpose of the gospel is for us. And John wrote a couple generations after Jesus that the gospel in the Johannine community were already far beyond Jesus. They hadn't experienced Jesus. And faith was going to come through the sharing of the stories. In our epistle, in the first letter of John, which is not the gospel, but it's another writing, says that we have seen, we have touched, we have heard. So in the early church, the, the spreading of the good news or the gospel, which means good news, the stories of Jesus from those initial ones who had the actually lived with and encountered Jesus, eventually would spread through the faith of those who came to Christ through hearing the stories. And generation after generation after generation, we don't have Jesus here with us, but we come to faith through the scriptures, through reading and hearing about the life and times of Jesus and the early church, especially in the book of Acts, and how the church grew and spread in the work of the Spirit. But through you, that's how faith spreads. Everyone here was influenced by someone in your life. It may have been a parent, it may have been a grandparent, it may have been a friend. For me, it was friends in high school that invited me to go to a Bible study. That was the beginning of my journey, my deeper journey. We are called to share the stories of faith. Yes, we can share scripture because that's the word of God that gets shared. But your own personal experiences of faith will make the difference in the lives of other people. And that's how the church grows. And that's how the church grew for centuries and continues to grow. We share our stories. You know, faith is like a teeter-totter. 
Anyone, anyone like dogs? I know there's cat people here too, but... You ever go to a dog show or watch something that the dogs go up a little teeter-totter and they kind of go up and then they're in the middle and it's balanced and then it comes down, right? And they've successfully done that little part of maybe a routine that they have to do, especially if it's a dog show. Faith is like a balancing act. You can be safe in that middle part if you get to it, but then it tips down. And you could run off and continue your journey. For some of us, we're still on that initial, I'm going to, should I take that first step even up? I don't know if I can do that. What if I fall off? What if I don't understand? My faith isn't as good as that person over there. Or that person over there who can recite verses in the Bible. but we're all called to go forward. We're all called to encounter Christ in our own way because we all come to faith in our own way. And Jesus comes to us behind our own closed doors because we have fears, we have concerns and worries and stresses and all the things that we encounter in life. He comes to us behind closed doors of fear and doubt and he shows himself to us in ways that might be through the word of a friend or a loved one or a story in a reflection or in the Bible. And suddenly the doors open and we can walk into the world at least a little more secure knowing that Jesus is with us. Even if we don't have full faith, it has to begin somewhere. We all started somewhere in our faith like walking baby steps. We all came from that part of our, of our life where those first steps were the hardest and maybe someone held our hand as we walked step by step by step and fell on our bum. But, you know, and they were brought up again and walk, walk, walk till they could finally walk and everyone's taking pictures. Oh, look at them walking down there all by himself. But faith is like that. And Jesus says, don't fear. Even if you fall back on your butt, it's okay. I'll help you up, and I'll continue to walk with you. And then you're going to grow stronger, and your faith is going to deepen. But there may be times that you're going to doubt. Even those who love me and declare me as their Lord and look to me in their lives will still have moments of doubt. And Jesus says, that's okay. He doesn't criticize and come down on us. He just says, get up and continue the walk with me. And I will continue to nourish you. I will continue to feed you. I will bring you into a family called the church. And through each other's love and support, you will continue to grow. You may hit the sort of an end of a road, but there's always something more. Thomas declared Jesus as Lord and Savior. And this Easter season, we now have an opportunity to encounter the risen Lord. It's a season of faith and growing and believing. And it's okay to be a Thomas because I'd rather see people struggle with their faith than to totally deny. Because struggling is, is a good thing. It helps you grow and mature. And then we can continue and walk. We live by faith, not sight. We hear in 2 Corinthians verse five, uh, chapter 5, verse 7. We had that in also in our hymn. And faith comes through hearing the message of Jesus, Romans 10, verses 14 and 17 say. So today, the week after Easter, we have a responsibility. Jesus commissioned his disciples to go out and share the story of his life. 
to offer forgiveness and grace to those who need it and healing and love. And he calls each of us and commissions each of us to go and do the same. So walk with Jesus through this season of Easter. Walk with him. And if you have some doubts, it's okay. Jesus still reaches out and shows his wounds, says, I love you, and peace be with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you were not only raised from the dead, but you returned to us, ministered to our lingering doubts, spoke to us, and continue to be with us. As we gather today in worship, in the days following your resurrection, we give thanks for your continuing presence with us. So keep speaking to us, prodding us, and encouraging us that we might not only believe, but also live the truth of your resurrection this day and always. Amen. Able and join me as we proclaim our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and the kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, she is worshiped and glorified. She has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our enemies, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who are justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. <laughs> For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friends, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who remain gospel, and all who seek For Michael, our presiding bishop, and Jennifer, our bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers. for the special needs and concerns of this congregation. We pray for those who are ill, remembering especially Henry Whitty, Henry. John Whitty, John. Shelley Erickson, Shelley. Jean Schwafel, Jean. Bob Vint Sr., Bob. Kelly Davis, Kelly. Will, Jason Camp, Shirley Underwood, Jim Ravenel, Frank Brown, Pat Kirk, 
Delilah Wagren, Sandra Findlay, Charles Gardner, Rebecca Redding, Tom Moorhead, Anne Zublin, Paul Dazenroth, Elaine Dazenroth, Elena Ellen Sachs, Gloria and Tom Cadwalder. We invite you to add your own petitions, either silently or aloud. Hear us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We invite you to add your own thanksgivings, silently or aloud. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. We invite you to add your own petitions, silently or aloud. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Almighty God, source of all wisdom and understanding, look graciously on your church and so guard the hearts and minds of those who will choose our next presiding bishop that we may receive a faithful pastor who will care for all your people, equip us for our ministries, and proclaim your word to us and to the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We acknowledge the native peoples of the land on which we stand. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. As you're able, please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please be seated for a moment. Before the birthdays and anniversaries, I'd like to bless both of these quilts. This quilt, um, this one here, is for Haley Hudson, a granddaughter of Linda and Bob Hudson, who's going through cancer treatments, and we pray for healing strength and confidence. And this one over here is for the f a friend of Darlene Gregory and Arnie Berglund, uh, Kathleen Montour, who tomorrow is going through open heart surgery. And as uh, we always do, these will be in the parish hall during the coffee time, and you'll have a chance to say a prayer for uh, each, of, each of them and to tie a knot after your prayer to show that there have been extra prayers, personal prayers done for them. So, let us pray. Almighty God, we ask your blessings upon these quilts 
as we dedicate them to your name, trusting that your love will radiate from, from them to Haley and to Kathleen. May Haley and Kathleen, who receive these quilts, find comfort from all that appears too much to bear, from all that feels as if it might be the breaking point, from all that seems to threaten your peace of heart. May these quilts be a shelter for, of, for time of overwhelming grief, a shade in times of sorrow too deep for words, a shield from times of unimaginable loss. And may Ka Haley and Kathleen be comforted by the presence of those who love and support them, by faith in your unconditional love for us and by memories they hold most dear. And may Haley and Kathleen experience not only your strength and your love, but also that of this congregation, especially those whose hands diligently join together each piece of material with each stitch of thread. We make this prayer in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you. And now, birthdays. Birthdays and anniversaries. Any birthdays to celebrate today or through the coming days? Anyone here? Anyone? Okay. I know there are people watching online. And uh, I know uh, Robert Ryerson, I think he'll be here next week, but he's celebrating his 100th birthday. So I think next week there's going to be a cake for him. So just, just uh, keep that in mind. Uh, anniversaries. Any anniversaries? People celebrating anniversaries today. Wow, it's one of those... Uh, wow. Okay, I'll hold on to everybody. <laughs> well, let's have a prayer. Dear God, we thank you for celebrations of life, for New Year's and birthdays, for relationships of love and anniversaries. We ask you to bless those who are celebrating birthdays and anniversaries with joy and peace, health and love. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name, bring offerings and come into his courts.
God, our refuge and our strength, receive all we offer you this day. Through the death and resurrection of your Son, transform us to his likeness. We ask this in his name. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We you lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who has sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death. By rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace, and that the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask for your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
We continue with the post-communion prayer, middle of page nine. So let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you this Easter tide and always. Amen. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. You have heard the word. Now the work begins. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.